welcome to Turn Talk. I'm Shelley Easter, producer and education attorney at the Federal Judicial Center. In each eight to 12 minute episode, we discuss the terms cases that are most likely to impact the lower courts. With me today is Erin Chemerinsky, Dean and Jesse H. Choper, distinguished professor of law at UC Berkeley Law School, and Michael McConnell, former judge of the 10th Circuit, Francis and Mallory Professor of Law and Director of the Stanford Constitutional Law Center at Stanford University Law School. Thank you both for being with us here today. Erwin, let's start with Moore v. Harper. What are the issues in this case and how did the court address them? Partisan gerrymandering is the process where the political party that controls the legislature draws election districts to maximize state seats for that party. In 2019, in Rucho versus Common Cause, the Supreme Court held that federal courts cannot hear challenges to partisan gerrymandering. The court said in federal court, they're non justiciable political questions. The issue in Moore versus Harper is whether state courts can hear challenge to partisan gerrymandering as violating state constitutions and state law. The case comes from North Carolina. North Carolina is basically a purple state. Republicans control the state legislature. After the 2020 census, the Republican legislature redrew congressional districts, so it was likely that Republicans would control 10 of 14 seats. The North Carolina Supreme Court found that this violated the North Carolina state constitution. It created a nonpartisan commission to draw districts for the 2022 congressional elections. Republican leaders of the North Carolina legislature went to the Supreme Court. They asked the Supreme Court to stay the North Carolina Supreme Court's order. The Supreme Court did not do so, but the Supreme Court granted cert. The argument being made by the North Carolina legislators is often referred to as the independent state legislature theory. It says that the state legislature gets not only the final word, but the only word when it comes to matters of congressional elections. And so the issue before the Supreme Court was, could the North Carolina Supreme Court constitutionally find that the districting violated the North Carolina state constitution? Michael, what did the court say and how did they get to that point? So the court rejected the argument that uh, state courts cannot uh, engage in judicial review under the state constitution, uh, did it largely on the ground that when the U.S. Constitution refers to a state legislature, it is referring to a body which is created by and embedded in state constitutional law, uh, and that there's no reason to think that the <clears throat> U.S. Constitution uh, has an exception for this particular uh, uh, area, and so ordinary judicial review proceeds. But in doing that, the court did not adopt the, you know, the opposite extreme position, which is that state courts can do whatever they want. Uh, the court adopted a somewhat nebulous middle ground position uh, that if the state court uh, becomes too creative in its interpretation, that's my word, not theirs, uh, in their interpretation of state law, uh, that effectively they usurp uh, the role of the legislature uh, as uh, a determining of uh, the, the law, and that that becomes a federal constitutional question. When Justice Kavanaugh had a concurrence, what did that add to this? And this goes to exactly where Michael finished. Chief Justice Roberts' majority opinion emphatically rejects the independent state legislature theory. But at the very end, he says, and I quote, we hold only that state courts may not transgress the ordinary bounds of judicial review, such they arrogate to themselves the power vested in state legislatures to regulate federal elections. Well, the question is, what does it mean to say that a state court decision transgresses the ordinary bounds of judicial review? Justice Kavanaugh in his concurring opinion addresses that. He articulates standards that might be used. He says, for example, and I quote, whether the state court impermissibly distorted state law beyond what a fair reading required. So I think what he is trying to do is give some content to the standard that Chief Justice Roberts articulated. 
So this was obviously a very complicated case. What are the takeaways that the lower courts can get from this? Well, let me just make two points about this. One sure. is that in addition to the standard of review uh, that Irwin was just talking about and that uh, the Kavanaugh concurrence uh, discusses, there may also be the question of remedy because ordinary judicial review consists of the court deciding whether the act of the legislature was constitutional or not. It does not, you know, if they're reviewing a statute, the court doesn't write a new statute. And yet for you know, roughly since about 1980, it's been an increasingly common practice uh, for courts to appoint their own special master to draw up their own map. I think there's a very good argument uh, that under uh, the elections clause that no map can go into effect unless it has in fact been passed by the legislature. The court does not refer to that theory. I think that will be a part of, leg of litigation going forward. Secondly, and maybe more importantly, uh, it's uh, the court contemplates federal court review uh, if the state court goes too far in its, uh, in its uh, interpretation, but it's a little difficult to figure out how that's going to work procedurally. Now, if the case, uh, so the case goes up through the state court and in the state Supreme Court, they make their interpretation. And in the course of that, someone will have argued that, oh, if you do that, it would violate the elections clause and the state Supreme Court will say, no, it doesn't. So there'll be an actual holding on the federal constitutional question by the state Supreme Court. Now, the parties could go to the U.S. Supreme Court uh, for cert, but I think it's pretty unlikely that the U.S. Supreme Court is going to want to review very many of these. They're going to be a very case uh, specific and you know, more likely the court is going to deny cert. Um, and then the question is, well, what? how do the federal, lower federal courts get involved? It, it seems to be clearly contemplated uh, in the opinion that they will, but it's hard to know how. Uh, the, the parties, those who are parties to the state court let, let litigation or seem to be barred uh, from bringing a new suit in federal court, either by the Rooker-Feldman doctrine, uh, which holds that a lower federal courts can't take appeals uh, from state courts uh, or possibly ordinary uh, preclusion principles. Um, but if some unrelated party uh, comes in and brings the case, there are going to be some very difficult standing questions. So uh, I think it's a very unlikely that uh, parties are going to be able to get into uh, the lower federal courts. I agree with Michael's latter point that I think it's going to be very difficult procedurally to see how the lower federal courts will be able to hear the challenges to what the state Supreme Courts decide. I disagree, though, with his former point. I think it is common in election cases, as he says, for when it's found that districting violates the Constitution or the Voting Rights Act, for a court to appoint a commission or a special master to draw new districts. Otherwise, you could get into an endless loop where the court strikes down districts and then the legislature keeps adopting illegal ones. Shelley, to go to your question, I think that the takeaway from this case that's most important is that the Supreme Court rejects the independent state legislature theory. Had the court adopted it, there'd be enormous implications. Then no court, state or federal, could have challenges to partisan gerrymandering. Then there couldn't be independent commissions, like in California, to draw congressional districts. Then perhaps even state legislatures could award electors to the candidate that lost the popular vote in a presidential election. The court did leave open the possibility for there being review where state courts are way out of bounds. The question is, what will that mean? Thank you both very much for being with us today. I look forward to talking with you again soon.